Welcome to this DGraph tutorial. Today we will see how to create a React application based on the GraphQL API hosted by DGraph using curl and GraphQL code generator. We are assuming that you already have a GraphQL schema deployed in a DGraph cluster with some data created in DGraph. In our case, the data model is about public schools in the US with associated projects and donations. You may have used the GraphQL endpoints with a GraphQL client, such as Postman, and verified that you can retrieve some data. With Node and Yarn installed, let's use Create React App, which is an officially supported way to create single page React applications. So we simply create our app structure and use TypeScript as we want a strongly typed programming language to speed the development while reducing the potential errors. We will just add a UI framework and we opted for Bootstrap. Let's open our app in VS Code and add the Bootstrap CSS. Then we can modify the generated app to start with a simple header. And from there, we can just launch the app. We're now adding code gen from the guild that will generate code from our GraphQL schema and our GraphQL documents. We need the GraphQL package as well as the CodeGen uh, CLI and we also need the client preset. We can now initialize the code generator. When asked f about the schema we simply give the DGraph GraphQL endpoint that we can copy from DGraph dashboard. We will put our GraphQL operation in a TS file and we want the generated code to be in GQL folder. Let's finish the configuration. and we can just install the packages. Let's have a look in VS Code. We can always modify the configuration file for the code generator. And in our case, we want to disable the fragment masking. We also create the GQL folder where the code will be generated. We are also adding the GraphQL language support extension to VS Code to introspect our GraphQL schema and help with autocompletion. We just have to create a configuration file and to configure the extension by providing our GraphQL endpoint and specifying where our GraphQL request will be. A VS Code restart is needed at this stage. That's it for the code generator. Now we need a client to fetch the data so we will use Urkel, which has a binding for React. Let's add the Urkel package, and then we can create a client and a provider. We just need a create client and a provider object. 
and we are initializing the client with our GraphQL endpoint. We can also add some security headers that we don't need in this tutorial. When the client is created, we can enclose our app with a provider using our client. With that done, we have a very robust factory in place. Our um, React application can fetch data on the GraphQL endpoint. We have um, a code generator that can introspect our schema and generate the types for the queries that we will need. Let's jump to the fun part of creating a page. So we'll display um, a list of schools. So to do that, let's um, start by creating a components folder and we'll create a file, a um, TypeScript file where we will put our uh, GraphQL operations and fragments. To see the magic happening, uh, we will just start the uh, code generator. So now it will monitor what we are doing in the TS files and generate the types for us. So for the school, we just need um, a fragment and you will see that VS Code is aware of our schema so we can just, for example, put a school item on schools, which is in the known list of types. And then we can select attributes from schools. And you'll see that we can only select some attributes at all in our schema. So we cannot really make errors there, which is the purpose of having this integration with our schema. When we save this file, you see that the generator trigger the generation of our types that we can use later on. Let's continue by creating um, a query. So we also have to correct the fact that GraphQL was not imported. And then we create a query to get, for example, the the um, list of schools. So we can use the query school operation and we can use the first argument to limit the list returned by the graph. And what we want is basically the fragment that we've declared. And that's it for the query that we need for our page. So we can create now a um, school component. We just need to import the school fragment that we will use as the data and some UI components. So let's create a very simple component schools that will have a property as a school item fragments array and we'll just build a table. So when, when we are doing our list group, you can see the benefit of having a strongly typed approach because now we can use our props data and it is an array. So we can um, use a map function and for every element we'll access all the fields of this element. In our case we'll just use the name of the school.
we just need to export our component and that's it for the schools we can now use our component into our application so we need to import the use query from Oracle to fetch the data and the um, uh, type definitions and the school component so let's fetch the data using the use query we just have to reference the query we've created before and we can pass the variable in this case it's the first 10 and with the data we can uh, for example build an array of schools and we can just insert our component we'll also add a message when fetching and an error message and we've done with the application development that we wanted to do we can just test it and launch the application so the application will fetch the data and display this cool component using our GraphQL API endpoint hosted in DGraph. That concludes our tutorial. We have seen how to set up a React application with Oracle Client, GraphQL Code Generator, and VS Code Extension, so we can safely and rapidly develop UI components based on a GraphQL API exposed by DGraph.